So this is a real emotional topic, Vince, really, isn't it? Something that, that you really like? Yes, I must admit, I'm very fond of them. Um, sweetheart brooches. They all started in the First World War when pilots and servicemen used to give them to their sweethearts when they went off to war. Uh, and the idea was that the sweetheart would wear it essentially until he came home. Um, they then took off again in the Second World War and uh, they've now become rather popular. But the, the, the sad reality is, of course, is not all of the men came home. No, unfortunately, I mean, harsh reality is that if you look at all of these, at some point, somebody probably died I, 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 for I the would, country. Yes, absolutely. I wouldn't know what the percentage would be, but I, I wouldn't be surprised enough. if it was 50%. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, enough. Yeah. I mean, there's some lovely brooches there. That one in particular is a Mappin and Webb one. Oh, that's lovely. Um, and John Mappin, one of the surviving members of the family, now owns a uh, large house down in Tintagel called Camelot Castle. And is he still involved with, with um Mappin I and don't Webb? think he owns Mappin and Webb anymore, but he's still predominantly involved. Mappin and Webb, I mean, a very famous maker. Jewelers to the Queen, of course, Absolutely, the royal family, yeah. yeah. So this is World War One. Mappin and Webb brooch. Oh, I see. So, OK, bullet head. My yeah, goodness yeah. me. OK, so this... I mean, the soldiers themselves were making these things in the trenches. A lot of them were, yes. I mean, some of them were bought. They were they were made by jewellers because the, after the First World War, the jewellery trade really picked up on the situation yeah. and made an awful lot of them. OK, so this one being made by Mappin and Webb in the form of a bullet, this, I I'm, I'm, would suggest to you, would be an officer's gift. Yes, probably, yeah. Wouldn't it? But I, I think... Even, you know, the standard Tommy was doing it, wasn't he? Yes. Oh, yeah. They. I mean, the prices range from very little to very a very lot, depending on what, what you're after. Um, they were made for just about everybody, irrespective of price. Um, so everybody that went off to war could afford to buy one to give to their uh, other half. Yeah, and you know what? I, I would imagine at the time that if you didn't give your other half a sweetheart brooch, they'd be seen as something being a little wrong here. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> so it, it was social pressure, wasn't it? It was, yeah, to a degree, yeah, it was very much so. Um, a, a lot of the ladies used to wear them, yeah. you know, especially on a Sunday when they went to church. Do, do you think also it was a way, almost like wearing an engagement ring, it was a way of showing that they yeah, were... Yeah, I they... think it was, yeah. It was, a, it was very much a, a way of showing some sort of commitment to your other half who was away fighting for Queen and Country, as it were. And, and a very proud thing to wear as well. Absolutely, yeah. Oh, yeah, they wore them with pride. Like I say, most ladies wore them on a Sunday when they went off to church. You know, the traditional phrase, the Sunday best, you know, was always something which is not used now, unfortunately. Um, but they used to wear them on a Sunday when they went out, and it was, it was worn with pride. And these things are the connections to real people long gone, Vince. Now, I, I know you are passionate about the connections to real people. Yes, very much so, yes. I mean, there, all these came from people and families who ultimately endured the First and Second World War, uh, went through it all, um, and each one of these, at some point, was given to a girlfriend, partner, um, as a, a sign of affection love and you know basically wait for me because i'm coming home sadly and, not all of them did come home and you know what if it wasn't for these brooches the men that purchased these brooches you and i may not be here no this is very true yeah absolutely yeah yeah because the men that purchased these brooches were the men that fought for the country absolutely and put us in the position we're in now wonderful so so this one the mapping web is first world war i've just clocked one to the right hand side let me just go yeah. over to this so you say they became popular in the First World War and then, of course, in the kicked Second off World again, War. didn't it, in yeah. the Second World War. What have we got there, Vince? Let's have a look at that one. That's a lovely one. That, um, essentially, it's the front... It it's almost looks like a photograph of the front of a bomber. Goodness gracious if me. If I look at the ticket, I think it's probably got something on the ticket. Is it a Lancaster? It's World War Two. Uh, I think it's probably a Lancaster. It looks every inch like a Lancaster. Do those propellers move? Uh, yeah, they oh do. Oh my goodness yeah, me, that. that is special. Is yeah. it made by anybody? Or no, no, there's no there's no maker's name attached to it. But it's a a very curious thing, and certainly something that would have grabbed a lot of attention if it was worn out as it should have been. I, I think it looks like a very good uh, um, homemade job, you know, conversion. Yeah, quite possibly, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, especially with the way the propellers move. 
Yeah. And the, and the, the stone attached to the bottom of it. That little pendant there, that's probably a complete one-off. How much is that? 125. It doesn't seem an awful lot, does it? No, no, not when you take into account the history involved. Probably spelter, or, or I mean, rather pewter. I yes, thought. yeah, pewter. I think it's probably pewter. Oh, Vince, this is wonderful. I haven't seen such a good collection, actually, of sweetheart brooches in one place for a very long time. Yeah, yeah, we, it's something that we keep a lot of. Um, we've got them in our other shops as well, uh, especially in Oxford. There's an awful lot of them in Oxford, um, but they are popular. People do buy them. And good, good sellers. To, mementos yes, from Bowness, where we are today. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. It's very, they're very popular. Um, and when you look at the history that's involved in them, uh, and you trace it back, if you can, as we have done, um, it just adds so much to the the story that's involved. Doesn't it, Joe? Well, thanks for adding to the story today. Sweetheart brooches, great topic. Yes, too true. Thanks, Vince. All right.